Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. Today we are going to add our binding system, which is going to be the stitched accordion binding. And we're going to add the pages in and we're going to do um, some of the page setups. We'll see how far we get. Let me see, what is this? A strange crease right there. Interesting. The album we're currently working on is the With Love, Basically Amazing album. And this is the February album of the month. It's currently January, so I'm just trying to stay a few weeks ahead of you guys in filming. And I'm doing a lot of prep off camera. So there is a full playlist for this album start to finish from the introduction to the basically amazing foundations which are printable templates available in my etsy shop and there should be a introduction to the basically amazing add-ons because we're using the decorative edge graceful in this one and then there might be a what uh how i prepped i think there's a video on um, yes yes there is there is a video about me prepping for this album and then the cover video so that playlist, I will link it up here and down below in the description box if you want to check it out. So we are going to be doing the stitched accordion binding. But I have to have the pages ready before we actually attach it to the album. So we have to do a little bit more prep. So I'm going to move this aside. I will have a list down below of the pages that I use as best I can. So we're going to do a two-page two page fin, I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> we're gonna do a two fin binding in this one. You could have done however many fins you wanted, but I chose to do a two page, or a two fin. <laughs> I chose to do two fins for this album, for the album of the month, pretty much, probably, because I'm trying to do um, an album every month, and I wanna keep the page setups and everything. I wanna just focus on a couple cool ideas and not have every fin so intricate and so many flips and flaps and pockets, which I love all of that, and they're still gonna have that. There's just not gonna be as many ideas per album, and we're gonna be using you know new collections every month and stuff like that. New or old or printable or whatever it is that we're gonna be using, uh, we will be using something different every month. But anyway, so again, you could do as many fins as you want, but I chose to do two, so my spine piece is the size that correlates with the two, the two page spine. So I picked uh, page 6.3 in the Graceful Decorative Edge, and this one is a two fin binding, and it has a half an inch in between each fin, and I printed it onto the vintage polka dot. If you want to see a super detailed video about this type of binding, I will link that video up here and down below in the description box if you want to see how I do this type of binding uh, specifically because I did a quick demo video on how I put the tie back in here and how I tape everything up and all of that. So instead of repeating that every time I do an album of the month, I'm just going to reference you to videos that I've already done. So this one is dedicated, this video I did for this was dedicated uh, just for this type of binding. So it's the new stitched accordion. This is not a new binding by any means. It's been done a long time. I was inspired by a photo that I came across a long time ago. <laughs> of this type of binding and I thought we need to do that because that makes perfect sense. And somebody helped me find that photo again and let me see if I can find it just real quick. Let's see, because it hasn't been that long since the person was like, here it is, here you go. <laughs> Oh, here it is. Here's the picture. Right here. I took it. I screenshot it. Somebody sent it to me back again in November 24th, but I had shown it before that. So you see this binding, how it's got these fins, these accordion style type fins, except that's just layers and layers and layers of paper, that the signatures are sewn on to that fin, right? So that is where this binding was inspired by completely. Um, but 
I, I do show you I do show you how to do it in that video. We're, we're gonna do it in this video as well. I'm just not gonna be as super detailed. I've already prepped everything. So everything's been scored, everything's been taped, the tie back has been put in there to protect the pages from ripping out. Um, but all of that's explained in the demo uh, video for it. And I think that's all we need out of the graceful for right now. And then from the Basically Amazing Foundations, we need two of 9C. So this is a C size album. So the main base page is C, 9C. So what I did, um, instead of printing two off and attaching them together, I just traced the main base page off onto folded white cardstock. With this size, you can use a 12 by 12. You can fold it in half and trace it out. Uh, but with bigger sizes, you have to use the larger cardstock, the 11 by 17. But in this case, you can use a 12 by 12. I'm pretty sure. Let me double check that. Yes. You can use a 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock to make a folded booklet type. So this is 9C, so you need one, uh, one little signature per fin. So I need two, which I already have two prepped. One of them I've already added the tie back to. And I think, oh uh, yeah, I've already added the tie back to this one and I've poked the hose, but I'm gonna do the other one with you now. So that's all we need for right now. Okay, so what I've done is just for double doing it, just for security to make sure nothing's gonna rip out, besides adding the Tyvek to the binding piece that we're gonna be sewing through, I also added it to the signature, okay? So I went ahead and cut a piece. This one's actually exactly the same height. I think I probably meant to have that shorter, but, but we'll go with it, it's fine. Um, I added it to that the folded edge so that the the uh, the thread that we're going to use won't rip through the paper. So how I did that, this is Tyvek. You can get it at, I've got it linked in my Amazon, or you can um, use uh, recycled uh, envelopes and things that are made out of Tyvek. But then I took a strip of tape, so this size tape happens to be three quarters of an inch tape, and that's just fine. That works just fine for uh, what I need to do. It just needs to cover both sides. And I found it just as easier just to use the width of the tape uh, as a guide instead of trying to say, well, let's do an inch and then we have to, you know, add two different types of tape on here and that kind of stuff. So I decided this was just easier. I have inked everything on both sides already with the walnut stain distress oxide. Okay. So now I'm just going to lay this on here since I know it's longer. Uh, then the page. Just going to lay that on there and then I'm going to flip it over. And I think I'll just use my scissors to cut the edge off or the excess off. And then you just want to burnish that. You can see I even kind of got a little crooked, but it doesn't matter as long as it's on both sides. Then I'm going to flip this over and burnish it again. Really good. All right, actually I'm going to flip it over the other way so that I can ink it really fast. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to mark the holes. So let me make sure I've got the right. Oh, does this have an up and a down? Since the background design that I chose does not have an up and a down, a right and a wrong, I just want to double check to make sure that it's the right way. Okay. 
So I'm just going to lay this on here because the, the, the areas you're supposed to poke your hose are already on the, the binding when you print it out. So you can just easily poke your hose through. You could also, if you wanted to, you could just use uh, three holes instead of five. It's, that's totally up to you. I chose five because the pages are really tall. So I thought it might be a little bit more secure. <clears throat> then we're gonna take a pokey tool and just poke through where I marked and give it a good, a pretty good hole. You don't need it to be super skinny, skinny, super small. You guys are gonna have to excuse my voice. I'm having some allergy issues today. It's January 21st today, and I'm just, <laughs> my allergies are just kicking, and it's, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand why. Okay. So then I'm gonna flip this back over. And I'm gonna ink this edge back. When you add the Tyvek to this type of cardstock, this is 80 pound, Ooh, I'm getting all kinds of stuff. This is 80 pound white cardstock. When you add it to this type of cardstock, it will crack once you fold it back again. But again, to me, it does not bother me a bit. I like the vintage um, distressed look, so I'm totally fine with that. But if you're not fine with that, you can use a different uh, cardstock altogether. Okay. So now we're gonna do, we're gonna sew these two in. So I need, I don't need, I, I have decided I prefer using wax versus not using wax when I'm sewing and I need a thick needle. This was just, um, this was just some um, wax that my mom had. She was a beekeeper and, she, and it was like sheets. It's almost like sheets that you would use to make candles, but it wasn't made for candles. It was made for, um, Beehives, like when you start a beehive, what they call them? Top bar beehives? I'm not really sure. I wasn't the beekeeper. But anyway, so she had these, I still have a whole box. I should probably show you guys one day. But she had this, um, she has these, and I just kind of rolled it up and balled it up and folded it and folded it until I had like a handheld chunk of beeswax. So anyway, long story. <laughs> long story short. <laughs> And then I think I'm going to use the black and white Baker's twine this time to bind it. So I've already prepped one piece, but I'm just going to grab a good length here. And I'm going to take and hold it between my thumb and the wax. And I'm just going to run it, run it over as many times as you need to. I mean, you can tell once the wax is on there. So this just helps you not tear your paper. It helps to tighten it down so that it doesn't get loose and come apart. Um, but yeah, so I've got this piece now and then I've already prepped another one. This one might be a little longer. Yeah, so this one's already prepped and ready to go. This one maybe just a little bit more. All right, so now I'm just gonna take one this needle has a really big eye, so it's easy to thread whatever you decide to use. And I'm going to take one of these. Okay, because so we're going to start in the middle here, and we're going to start just on one fan. There's no direction or anything, so it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to sew this on. Again, the video that I linked uh, will show you in a little bit more detail of what we're doing here. So, if you want to reference that, that would be great.
haven't decided if I was going to put anything on the ends of those yet. So I think I'll just leave it for now. And then I'm going to do the other one. Let me go ahead and burnish that just a little bit more. And I'll do this one really quick. Okay, so now we've got those both stitched on. So the difference between this and the video, the demo video of this type of binding is I just use one booklet, one page booklet, um, you know, where it's just one piece of paper folded in half. I just used one and we're gonna build from there. So this is gonna be our main base for each fin. So um, now what we need to do and again, this is all detailed in that video, so I'm just gonna go ahead and attach these two um, sections together where it's gonna sandwich the, um, the thread, the, the baker's twine that we just sewed on. That we just sewed on. Sandwich the baker's twine that we just sewed. <laughs> Sew the booklet on too. Sew the booklet with. There we go. <laughs> I've been having so many troubles with my words these days. I don't know what I just, I've decided I don't know how to talk anymore. So there's one encased in there, nice and neat. So let's do the other one. Taking the backing off on each side of the baker's twine. And then we're gonna fold it over. Oops. Right. So now both of those, both of those fins are closed up and we are good to go. Now we can actually install this into our album. So let's pull it back over here. So this is what we did. This is what we did in the last video. We made this wraparound cover, which is super cool. And we're gonna install the binding piece that we just made right here on this first spine. Right? It's going to look so good. Right there. So all we have to do is remove all this tape backing. And I am going to add a little bit of white glue just to kind of help it secure. wouldn't let go. And I'm going to use art glitter glue for the liquid glue portion. And I'm going to put it in between where the two sides of the fin come together. I want to make sure there's glue in that little valley there. Because I just want to make, I just want to double check to make sure everything is sealed down tight, and then I'm just going to do a little bit across the three pieces that we attached to the spine. Okay, I'm going to flip this around. Uh, we still don't have a up and a down, a front and a back on the pages, so we are good to go. And I'm just going to center it. 
top and bottom. It should fit on your spine piece perfectly. I need to scoot it this way just a little bit. Is it going to let me? I think I got it. Okay, let's burnish everything down. Okay, so now everything is attached and securely down. Just, gonna just double check, just to be sure. Okay, so now our two are our binding system and our two page setups for our two fins is securely installed. Okay, next up I'm going to do a little bit of building of the page. Now I've already done it to the back fin and um, just like we did in the last video series or no, not the last video series. That was the ephemera holder, which by the way, um, you guys are now starting to give me ideas of what to call it. An ephemera keeper, <laughs> I think, is the winner so far. Ephemera holder, ephemera keeper, like my scrapper keeper, <laughs> ephemera keeper. So we might change it from ephemera holder to ephemera keeper. But anyway, the one before that, the Christmas album, the sugar cookie album, we did the same but different. So same page setups for both fins, just a little bit different in embellishing. But this way, it allows us to do some really cool ideas and have a finished album, but we can do it quickly. So I've already done it to the back fin, um, and I'll show you just really quickly what I ended up doing, and then I'll get you the pages out. I'll tell you what you need. So we've just still just got the one, one set of pages, the one little booklet that we made. So I attached a shorter page here, a smaller page. This is actually the main base page for the D, this size page. And then we've got a flip uh, open flap, and then we've got a pocket. There's a little note there. I'll tell you that about that in a minute, right? And so then this flips open like this. We've got the back here. Then we've got another small D main base page right here that flips out this way. And then here is that page that we started with, the 9C page. Flip that open, and now there is a belly band inside there. Okay, and then Put that all back together and when we flip it on the back there's still nothing so this is the front of the page setup okay then we're going to end up doing the back but right now we're just going to focus on the front so let me show you what pages you need um let's see out of the foundations and again these will be listed down below in the description box you will need two uh, let's see two pages of 10d per fin. So if you did three fins, you'll need two per fin. So that would be six. So I printed two pages of 10D with the vintage polka dot background onto white cardstock. Okay, so uh, essentially I've already prepped these. Uh, these two pieces, I cut off the side. We're gonna be using one of these pieces and then this other piece we'll use for something different along the way here. Uh, so I cut those off of the page and then on one of them, I, well, I cut three tabs off of both and just left one long, but on one of them, I put the tape on the fin with the vintage polka dot facing up, so the tape's on the fin here, and then on the other one, the tape is on the back side, on the white cardstock side of the fin, and then I chomped the corners a little bit there. So we need those two pages. Do we need something else in here? Nope. We already did that earlier. Yep, yep. Okay, and then out of the graceful 
decorative edge we need one of these parfum page 24b and i just printed it onto white cardstock so here's what it looks like right i cut them out and on this piece here i took the two short tabs off and then i put tape along this one long tab on the one and then on the other it's going to be a pocket so i put tape on all three tabs and then tabbed the corners okay so we've got that so you need one one page of 24b per fin and then in a minute we're going to need page 36d this belly band here we are going to need this the 26d the main base um, on 26d of the belly band we're going to need that because we're going to do a little bit of an adjustment for something um, so that we don't have to print off this whole page okay so let's start with let's start with this page here this is the part where this little pocket flip is going to be attached Okay, I'm just thinking, okay, I need to add magnets too. So we're gonna be adding magnets. And I'll have timestamps actually down below the in the description box for you guys. And I've also been putting them in the comments. I pin a, a comment at the top of the comments. I put them in there too, just in case. Um, just in case you need to, that's easier to reference. Okay, I should have bent this first. So we're gonna add this flap here to the outside edge so here's where it's going to attach down to the page but we're going to add this one to this outside edge here like that i'm going to burnish that down oh i should have into that a little bit so the plain templates and, and the background design templates, they come with that distressed brown edge. But I still like to go ahead and I still like to go ahead and <laughs> ink them up just a little bit more because of the page, if the white paper cracks or anything, you don't want to see any of that. Or if you just score it wonky, um, you want to make sure you cover that up. But I'm going to go ahead, just like in that one funny video, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and go ahead. <laughs> Okay, one of the things I did the, when, I, when I did the setup on the back fin, I had to finagle a little bit. So this time I'm, I'm going to do this a little different. When I added the magnets, I did a little finagling because I forgot that I was going to add magnets. <laughs> so for this one, we're going to take the tape off the long tab here. And we're going to leave these kind of out because I don't want to make it a pocket just yet. And we're going to come just a itty bitty bit away from that score there. And we're going to attach this down like so. I think I did a pretty good job. Let's double check. Eh, it's a little off, but that's okay. That's okay. All right. So we're going to add magnets in there. And so I wanted to make sure it was easier to do that, right? So we've got this part. I'm trying to think if the magnets are going to matter from the, the bottom layer. It probably is. So let's let's do this. We're going to take this section that we just made here and we're going to attach it down to the front of this page. Let me fold those in. We're going to attach it down right here like this and we're going to come a little bit away from that edge let me finish that really quick let me remove that tight backing and then add this down Burnish. Just 
giving that just a little bit of inking right there. So we've got this, this, that flips out, and then we've got these two pieces. So then this next piece here, this one, you need to attach this tab. We're gonna attach it, flip this booklet that we sewed in, flip that open, and we're gonna attach it to the edge of this page right here, okay? So I'm gonna remove the tape from that, and I'm gonna match it up. I might have it sticking over just ever so slightly, just to make room for, I'll show you. Just barely sticking out, because then this gets folded in here like this, and then this comes over top like this, and that folds over like that. So it's like one unit now, okay? So before we do magnets, let's do the, let's, let's talk about the, um, how, are, how can I do this to keep that out of the way? Let's talk about the belly band and what I did. So in, instead of printing the whole page, the whole 26D page, uh, instead of printing that whole page out and having to use the other elements in it or not using them at all, I decided to use one of the leftover pieces from the 10D, right? And I'm gonna take this piece here, and I'm, I forgot to print off the actual um, guide piece, but that's okay. I'm gonna lay it on here, and I'm gonna scooch it over. I'm gonna match it up top and bottom. Just to make sure it's straight. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm gonna lay that down there, and I'm gonna stop it right at this edge here, and I'm gonna trace this edge out because I wanted it to be the vintage polka dot, but I didn't want to have to print that whole page out because I don't think we would be using those bits and pieces. Make those little edges really quick. Right, so then I'm gonna take the same piece and I'm gonna scooch it over the other side, line it up top, bottom, match it up to that edge there. And then trace this side. And then I've got a little bit better of a skinnier. I've got a little bit bitty bit a bit of a skinnier belly band than the actual belly band that's included in the templates. So now I'm gonna take a second and cut this out, leaving the top and bottom tabs. So I am gonna keep one of these. This one isn't a full strip, but I'm gonna keep this piece here. I'm gonna put it aside. And I'm also gonna put this extra piece aside because we could use this. Maybe we could make a pocket on the front and back cover or something. We'll see. Um, I think I've already got the back set up, planned out. So I think we'll just wait on this. Maybe we'll put it on the covers. We'll see. So then, I want to, I'm gonna ink this whole thing up and I'm gonna take my scoreboard and I'm gonna um, score these tabs. So yeah, this is just a way you can alter and use your templates and um, not be wasteful and not have to print more pages out that you don't need the whole thing of and you can just use what you have and make it work. Uh, and I like that about these templates because some of them are meant to be traceable, some of them are meant to be printed, but the one I used to trace, you know, I, I it's meant to be printed, but it worked just fine as a traceable template. And I do that a lot with templates. If I don't want to print out the whole page, I just want to trace it on there. You know, it's easy. So that's a, one of the other great reasons why the workbooks are important because you can store all of those traceable templates and have them there ready for you when you need them. Okay, it's not perfect, perfect, 
but it's not bad either. All right, I'm gonna add some tape. I think I'm gonna use a quarter, no, I'm gonna use, whoop, there we go, three eighths of an inch. On that, what, maybe I won't. Well, yeah, well, I'll go ahead. This is score tape, three eighths of an inch. You could just use glue if you would prefer, wet glue. Okay, so I'm gonna add it in here. I'm gonna try to center it, but I don't think I got my other one centered, and I don't wanna measure it, so I'm gonna try. Take the top and bottom off. And I'm just gonna eyeball it. And I'm not very good at that, but I'm gonna try, like I said. <laughs> I don't think I got it center, but it's good enough. Good enough. It might even be crooked, but that's okay. So now we've got the page set up. One of the things I like to do when I'm adding magnets and I'm trying to figure out how I wanna do it, I just since I know I'm gonna mat these, I just want to trace that so that's the furthest point that I can have a magnet is somewhere right in here because this is going to need to be matted so um, I need to be careful where I place the magnets to start with and I have a little note back here because I have a magnet here and here on the back side but I may depending on my inserts I may need to add another magnet back here because they all kind of go together. So magnet, magnet, and then there's a magnet back here. So it all kind of works together to keep things tight. But I might need another one in case, just in case, depending on how much uh, I put in here as inserts. So that's where I'm at on that. But let me grab my magnets. And I'm, I am gonna, I think I'm gonna see here if it's gonna, I mean, it's there's gonna be many layers, but just in case, I wanna make sure that it doesn't like do the exact opposite to like push away from each other. So it's a good way to start by making sure you're right side up on any given magnet. Ah, perfect. I thought I had it, I thought I had a plan. So here's, here's what I'm gonna do, <laughs> right? I'm gonna start there, then I'm gonna open this up and I'm just gonna, oh. I see. Huh. Well, I need to be careful because I need this to come back just a little bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the glue dot, put that on the top of this. Like that. And I'm going to press it down so that it'll go on top, on this top flap here. Okay, and then I'm gonna put a piece of tape over that. So are you guys getting more and more comfortable with using magnets, like figuring out how to use them and which order to use them? I feel like the more you do it, the easier they become, you know, the easier they are to use. Okay, so then the next thing I wanna do is, I'm gonna grab another magnet. Let's see if that'll work. I might have to scoot it over just a little. And I'm gonna place another glue dot, because it's attached actually to the magnet underneath there. I'm gonna place another glue dot and I'm gonna try to flatten this out just a little. Right, like that. And it should be stuck, it is. And this time I'm gonna take a piece of tape. I got too big of a piece it looks like. And cover that up so that the inserts do not get stuck on the magnet. And it'll have like a smooth just whoop. So we got that, boom, boom. And then there's gonna be one under here.
All right, so then let's come back up here and close this pocket out. starting to embellish or pre uh, prep and plan because I wanted to embellish this front envelope pocket with you guys this one and whoops <laughs> and this one and I started to plan that out but there's an embellishment that I want to make with you guys that I think is really cool and it's kind of fun and um, I think it'd be a good way to stretch some of the products that you already have some additional things that you can do with something uh, maybe a little bit un orthodox or untraditional or a little bit different um just trying to get the most out of your supplies so i think i'll do that next and it will it'll just be a, a standalone video where we make an embellishment for these pages so that's what i'm going to do so i'm going to stop this video here and i'm super excited about that so i'm trying to upload on monday wednesday friday um, in case you guys are curious while i'm working on this project uh, I wanted to make sure I do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and there might be an additional video and it might be Thursday or Saturday, depending on what's going on uh, in the process of the album making. So yeah, I try to upload then and I try to post the videos um, at noon Eastern Standard Time. So if you don't get notifications on your phone, you can always check back on those days to see if I've uploaded a video so you don't miss one. But if not, there's the playlist, of course. You can always start at the beginning and work your way through. But be sure to give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Be sure to leave me a comment and let me know what you think about what's going on so far. Let me know what you think if you've tried the stitched accordion binding. Um, yeah, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn that notification on. I don't know if I just said that or not. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I will see you guys next time. Bye.